Hi everyone, I'm back and just as promised, well not necessarily promised, but as mentioned, I want to start a throwback Thursday, um, I guess series. Not sure how far this is going to go, but hey, let's try it, right? Now, the concept for this series is this. I've always journaled. I'm, I've always been a writer. I just always like writing. Um, and when my husband transitioned, I journaled even more. And that has been 11 years. And I mean, because you go through so many emotional stages and you've taken on so many roles. Now, on top of the roles you already had as a wife, mother, daughter, daughter-in-law, grandchild, friend, everything, right? Employee, employee, or, or what have you. And now all the roles in which my husband had, now, suddenly, those are my roles, my responsibilities. So to kind of keep myself focused, I would just write. It was a form of release in the beginning. And you all know that the first few years, I was just adamant about, no, I don't, I don't, I refuse counseling or any of that. I just knew that I could figure this out myself. And during that process, I just began to write. And in that process of writing, and I would look back at some of the previous entries in my journal. And it was encouraging. It was, it really was, everyone. Because I could, I remember looking back on days in which I felt like life was so heavy that the fear and, and, and the confusion and the anger that I felt, I just couldn't get through it, right? But obviously I did, right? Because the, the reality is I wrote about it and I can't recall like a few days or a couple of months later, I looked back at it. So that means I got through it and hey, the evidence is right here, 11 years later, and I can look back at it. So that's what we're going to do. That's what this series is going to be about. Let's, within, with intentions now, with healthy intentions, pull up my old journal, just random, fan, you just fan through the pages, and we'll just grab something. And I'll read you the entry. And I'll see if I can recall as much as I can about that day or what I was going through. But the goal here, so, and I want you to hear me clearly, okay, is the fact to inspire you where you are now. You will get through it. Yes, honor your feelings. Get professional help. Do not put it off. You know, I, I always say it with, you know, one of my goals with this YouTube series for those going through bereavement is the fact that I refuse to, to do it on uh, so many levels. You have to check out that video as to why I, the many reasons I refuse to do it. But when I did, my life was, I can't even explain to you. Not saying that first session was just like, whoo, I opener. No. Because a lot of the things that my therapist suggested I do to uh, help me in my grief journey, I was already doing unknowingly. Like journaling, for instance, you know, not being afraid to cry, you know, and to set goals and, and things like that, right? But I needed someone to hear me and I need to verbalize. I needed to say to someone else who did not know me, 
yet knew where I was coming from, you know, emotionally and psychologically to help me navigate my emotions, where I wanted to go, better, basically better streamline my life. Okay. So please do not put yourself through any unnecessary stress and agony by avoiding professional counseling, therapy, any of that. All right. Even and definitely for your, you know, for your children as well, because as an adult, I couldn't even articulate or verbalize in any shape or form some of the things that I was feeling. And I have a lot more experiences with life than a child does. So my vocabulary should have, you know, it's a little bit more uh, fuller than that of a child. So if a child is going through bereavement, they don't have that, you know, that word bank to tap into to express how they're feeling. So it's extremely important to make sure that you get your children or youth in some form of professional, healthy um, bereavement support outside of, you know, family. Family is always good, family and friends. But to give them something where they get in a group, you know, group setting with other children who are going through the same things, but under the direction of a professional therapist. And that's something that I did for my children um, very early. All right. So that's a six minute introduction. So let's move on. Okay. Oh, let me also say I have my books and don't forget guys, you can get them on Amazon and they're on um, Barnes and Noble. And if you're in Atlanta, you can go by me do bookstore. Okay. And this one here yeah and my activity book oh this will keep the juices flowing help you clear up the fire your brain it will all of these are really great books and um this this journal here planet and living life is a great way to summarize your day you know at the close of every night i would just grab my journal and ask myself just little simple questions and with that being said one two three four all four of my books come from me <laughs> Although I wasn't aware of it, grieving and going, this is my journal. Like, I have everything here. Yeah. And some things that I've done. This was the outline for these four books. It was. All right. So, Throwback Thursday, we're going to pull through here. And out of 11 years, I have like two. So, Let's start with the big boy. But I do want to show you some things that I did um, have. Like, for instance, one of the things, once um, things started to clear up for me, because I'm sure you guys are like, what is that red thing? This is, um, I did my first marathon after my husband passed away. So much fun here uh, in Atlanta. And it was called the Ultimate Wine Run. So here's, you know how they say I have my I have receipts or I have my medallion to Rupert, you know. Here, I don't know if you guys could, yeah, like that. And also, like I said, those many roles that you take up that previously your husband or your spouse, um, were in charge of or that was their thing as a parent becomes yours and mine yes my husband let me say this my husband is so involved in boy scouts like he was like i think he went from a cub all the way up to eagle scout he loves it so when my husband passed away 
of course, you know, I became a dead mother. Didn't even, I didn't have to deal with that. No. Now, I think one of my daughters did Girl Scouts for a minute, but mm, my oldest daughter, she's very dainty. So anything outside of <laughs> makeup was not her thing. It, it, she tried. So, hey. But anyway, back to the topic. So here's my badge. When I, um, this is just one of them. I have a lot of them. Um, and this, let's see, which one is this one? Oh, this one, the Pinewood Derby Days in 2014, Southern Crescent District. I don't know if you guys can see that. No, I'm trying not to get that glare off, but anyway. Mm, but anyhow, so I get it. Will you get busy after your spouse? Yes, you will. So, let's just face. It's like spinning the wheel, but we're not going to spin the wheel. We're just going to... Well, let me take out this. Because I don't want anything to influence our fanning skills. I have every, I have so much stuff in here. And also, I just noticed some days I would just grab paper. I could be in the kitchen or something like that. And I would just start writing. So, I may just grab a sheet out of here. And then, you know, once I start writing. Because, you know, you never know where you can be when you get into your emotions. And one form of release that I had, like I shared with you guys, was writing. I could literally be at work and I feel like this buildup of emotion coming. And I just stop what I'm doing and I'll just write. Right? And then when I get home, I'll bring it and slide it in my journal. All right? So, but this time... Make sure you guys can see it. We're just going to fan through. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's strange. But this is so content. But this was in here. So I guess this is where I need to be. Hmm. Maybe should I fan it again? Okay. Oh, this was a long intro. It fell on this, but this was a, it says continuation of February 25th, 2011. All right, so this was fresh because my husband, we buried him February 21st, I mean, February, February 1st of uh, 2011. So I'm going to read this, where are my glasses? And we're going to talk about it. Now, remember, the reason we're doing this is only to encourage you because on February 25th, 2011 at 9.40 a.m., this is how I was feeling. And I did not see far enough in the future to right now. Today is September. What's the date? I think it's the 28th. I can't remember. I think it's either the 27th, 28th. Sorry. Of 2011. I mean, of 2020. I'm like, oh, let me call get it again. It, today is September 28th of 2022 okay september 28th of 2022 this was 2021 so i'm gonna read a couple because this was a long intro i think i have yeah it's like three pages i was really in my emotions this day and i can understand this was written by me february 25th 2011 at 9 48 y'all Can you guys see that? Okay. And it says, this morning, and I'm not going to say my ch children's name. Uh, this morning, my son did not want to go to school. I told him that today his school was going to the circus. He still did not want to go. Then fear began to start in on me. I began to ask myself, is this a sign that I should not let him go? Is this a sign that something will go wrong or something or someone will harm my son? I began to think like my husband. He would send him to school because one, we had already paid for the trip. <laughs> Two, he did not allow fear to control him. My husband knew he was a child of God, 
trying my best to think like my husband, I sent my son to school. Lord, please bless and keep all the kids safe at the circus. Oh, I got my hair right in. It's like it gets larger, it gets smaller. So I'm just going to grab my glasses, okay? Okay, better. Lord, I thought I had failed Chris, January 23rd of 2011. For the past 10 years, whenever Chris had a medical issue, I was there or close by or on my way to help him. It was if the spirit would say something is wrong with him. This time, I didn't get that feeling. The night my husband died, he called the house phone at 8.15 p.m. from his cell phone. He was in the bedroom at that time. I answered and heard nothing. I said, blank, what do you, when I say blank, that's my husband saying, what do you want in a joking manner? Still silence. I sent the children to check on him and they came back saying that they couldn't see him. I thought my husband was hiding from the children like he always does and then scare them. So I yelled to the back of the house and said something like, Babe, you are supposed to be resting, not playing. My husband actually was dead on the floor on my side of the bed where no one could see or hear him. I checked my husband's cell phone for the late last numbers dial. It only showed his mom at 7.33. Nowhere did I find that 8.15 p.m. call he made home. Every day after Chris' death, it reminds me of how he blessed my family. God gave me my husband. God allowed me to love him. God allowed me to be loved by him. God allowed him to love my daughter as if he conceived her. God allowed me to give birth to three of his own children. God truly loved my husband. I pray that my husband found this out while he was living. Lord, now you see why I'm so sad and why I miss him. Because my husband was a true man of God and he didn't even know it. I was definitely blessed by the Lord to love, live, hold, laugh with, cry with, argue with, make up with, forgive, and appreciate my husband, his full name love me that was so in this entry i hit on a lot of different things right i'm gonna take these glasses off okay because of the glare from the um and once again the reason we're doing this series because it's you don't want to go back when you're in a state of unhealthiness so I would not suggest this to anyone who is fresh in their grieving process to do on a regular basis. Because what can happen is you can go, go back so often to if you're not healed, it can become a unhealthy trigger. It can trigger those emotions, those negative emotions that, you know, and if you're not, you know, prepared for how to manage them, and pull yourself emotionally away from it, detach from them, and get yourself back into a healthy form of re your reality, um, it, it can be unhealthy for you, okay? So if you do want to do something like this on a regular basis, bring it up to your therapist or talk to a family member and say, hey, I think it'll be beneficial to me to kind of go back through my journal and read re entries on a regular basis just to keep me inspired. But I need an accountability partner. So just in case if I go too far and I stay there too long, my accountability partner will come and pull me back out, will coach me back to reality, okay? All right. So the reason I'm doing this, 11 years of not doing it the right way to doing, you know, when I say doing it, you know, refusing counseling and back and getting the help that I truly professional help that I needed to where I am now. Right. I, I, you all, I am in a beautiful place in my life, you know, and my relationship with life, 
birth. My relationship with death is beautiful. Okay? <laughs> it really is. And just remember now, on February 25th at 9.40 a.m., I wrote, Lord, now you see why I'm so sad. I couldn't see beyond this day. I couldn't. The next day, let's see, when did I write something else? I didn't write it. Let's see, I wrote something else on two days later, according to the book. But I may have wrote something on some loose leaf paper. So let's talk about it. This particular day, if I can re recall, is when... My son, we had already prepaid for my son to go to the circus with his school. And he didn't want to go. And it wasn't, he had gone on trips with his school before. Rather, I was a chaperone my husband. My husband loved the chaperone at school. They loved him. And um, it was fear. So let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that fear element when it comes to grieving because I went through it. When my husband passed away, that role of being the mother, the nurturer, you know, that, that element of comfort and peace. I love it. I still do. And I had a great joy in knowing that my husband was the pro provider, although we were both providers, but it felt good Having somebody to physically, energetically, and spiritually collaborate with to build and 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 maintain a household, a, a healthy household, and a healthy family, right? So without that role being filled any longer, now I had to become all the roles in which I subconsciously assigned to my husband and the ones that he actually had, okay? And one was protector. Although, when he was living, I had zero fear at all. Whether he was at home or night. Because my husband went vacation, you know. And, um, you know, without the family sometimes with his friends. I had zero fear. But when my husband passed away, it was just like, I was just consumed. It's just like, boom. I remember, case in point. I can't, I want to say it was like around a year. It, this went on for a few years, actually. I could sit down and send myself into a frenzy where I could feel it physically. I mean, with headaches, I would make myself cry just about thoughts in my mind of what if. What if this happened? Not what if anything good, but what if this, so that I could be prepared. What if somebody, and something, I, like I said, my reality is I'm just sitting down. Let's say I, I need to go to the grocery store and I have the children with me. What if somebody, this is just an example. I can sit there and think why I'm preparing myself to go to the, to the grocery store, something I've always done. Oh my goodness. What if somebody... Walk up to me, just snatch one of my children. What are you going to do? Oh, my God. What? I would just, you know, just, just throw myself into a frenzy. Because in that moment, I need to know how I was going to protect my child if something like that happened. And heaven forbid if I saw anything on the news that was remotely close to anything that was going on in my mind. A lot of times... Those negative images and news, although they were news, set the seed for some a lot of that negative thinking and thoughts that I unknowingly fed and it turned into a great fear. It I mean, when I say it what I could throw myself into a frenzy, a panic attack. I mean, I wouldn't want to move. I, even though I know something had to be done, I will just be like, no, I'm not going anywhere. So it's like, what's the word? Paralysis. I wouldn't do anything because I had just scared myself 
to death. I had just scared myself out of doing what I know I need to do. Scared myself out of fulfilling my responsibility. And then, of course, as I breathe and as time goes on, I, I was like, okay, I can no longer go without doing this. This has to be done. And believe it or not, I will alter my original plan based on that fear. So in other words, if I had planned a day to take the children and I to the food warehouse, like Sam's Club or something like that, and fear, you know, just paralyzes me. So I'll calm down. And then that day in that moment, I may not even go to the store. And I'll say, well, you know what? I'll go tomorrow. This is me being smart, trying to get ahead of the fear and trying to avoid that that vision that was not even true in my mind, you know? Well, if I do not, if I go to the store, I just want to take the children. So that cannot happen. I did that on so many occasions, you all. And it's not real. You know, I was, I heard a video many years ago and this guy said, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. And that's exactly what it was. It was a false vision. I know I'm outside the wording. That wasn't even real. It did not even exist in my reality. But yet I allowed it to affect me physically. I mean, headaches, migraines. And affect how I maneuvered my life. My children probably would have enjoyed getting out and going to the, the store with me. Because they enjoy, especially when we go to sounds, they grab all their little, you know, good things that they love. And all the little free, this, you know, food that they have on display. So, yeah. Fear is not only paralyzing. Fear is physical. Fear is destructive. Fear is manipulative. Manipulative in a sense that it manipulated me to change, to alter my life. You know, something as simple as taking my children, enjoying the day at the uh, supermarket. Right, taken away from a healthy memory with me and my children. So that's what I mean by manipulative. You know. So if you're going through fear, and you will, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, it doesn't matter. Because you're taking on and additional, additional roles in which your loved one possess. And to add another layer to that, you miss them performing in those roles. You're right. So that's why I say, feel what you're feeling. And thank goodness, I found a, a pretty healthy way of release. And I would just write. And there are way too many stories I've heard of people indulging in other ways to release. And it doesn't define who they are. And I want you guys to know that. You all to know that. It doesn't define who you are. Um, I had, uh, I've shown you all some pictures after my husband passed away. I gained so much weight and I'm still getting, just getting my body back, um, to where it was because I was pregnant when my husband passed away before I was pregnant. And I would just eat, do whatever I need to do and just get in bed. That's all I did. That's all I had enough energy to do. And I gained a lot 
of weight. Yes, I did. And I would just eat for no reason. And to this day, I don't even eat these zebra cakes. But when my husband passed away, I don't know who brought a zebra cake into my house or why I even grab one. But that was my go-to after my husband passed away. I would just, err, uh, yes. And um, I, let me also say this. As I was reading back on this, um, there was a part in here where I talked about how I found my husband non-responsive at home. And if you, you know, played a bit, this video back, you can tell that I paused. And... Within that moment, I I, re, I could feel it in my chest, in my heart space, what I was feeling that day. So I don't know if you guys know, it's like kind of, my voice kind of, you know, tickled, not necessarily tickled, but kind of like waned a little bit. And that's the part that I just really want people to understand that, you know, make sure if you're doing something similar to what I'm doing, that you have an accountability partner partner that is ready and available so when you get to moments like this they can be like hey 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 come on back you're not there anymore right and they put that mirror in front of you where are you now and they put that calendar in front of you and say hey what is today's date and you're like oh today is september 28th 2022 that's right it is what you're reading is february 25th of 2011 Okay, we're not there any longer. Feel what you're feeling and let's come back. All right. So. But that's it. I said I didn't really want to keep the videos too long and it's 32 minutes. So this is basically what we're going to do. Um, and it should get better and short as time goes on because. I'm really trying to see how I want to structure the video. And, um, you know, I even thought about going in and pre-select entries and then structure an outline, you know, speaking points so I can have a more organized and, you know, easy flowing um, conversation with you all. And... Um, but there's a part of me that just says, mm, I just really want it to be as real. Because if I predated, you all would not have heard how it felt for me to read how I felt my husband unresponsive at home. You know? So it may be a mixture. I may just randomly fan through. or And on some days, um, I'll just pre-select and I just have a little outline. For those of you, because I get it. I'm a left brainer too. I love order. Oh my goodness. Symmetry. <laughs> it's my happy place. Okay. So with all that being said, you get through it. And yes, fear is real. Fear is physical. And I tell people that bereavement is real. Heartache is real. Happiness is real joy is real happiness and joy is physical as well too laughter is physical peace is wonderful and once you continue to grow and heal through this process you'll gain all of that beauty back and with all those extra roles that you have uh added to your um lifetime resume believe me they're gonna come in handy because like i said i did not know that i was gonna be an author not of this type of not with this you know i did not i did not see this coming <laughs> and i'm so glad i i was able to put these together that god the spirit revealed it to me because I don't know if I, I did. Well, let me tell you what I do know. That 
it hurt you guys and it hurt a lot and when i say hurt losing having someone transition from your life suddenly someone where i mean someone that you dreamed of when you was in middle school and had never met and then you meet them when you're like 28 years old and you just fall in love and you live an amazing life together and to have it suddenly no longer available to you it's challenging it's hurtful it's painful but i'm here to tell you that you get through it and life becomes even and ever so much more beautiful because you are a new being you are a new person because during your bereavement time remember now you're taking on these new roles so you're not first of all you're not even doing you know you're no longer walking the same you're no longer thinking the same you no longer talking the same <laughs> Because you had to have conversations and have had to put yourself in positions that previously you did not have to. So yes, those new experiences has elevated you, has changed you. So that's why I, I made it my business to put on my books, all of them, self-rediscover. You rediscover and discover you you know because you're no longer the same you're not and with proper healing and counseling and forgiving yourself self-healing okay self-love all right energize yourself first and um you get through it i never wanted any, I never want anyone to have to go through bereavement and not know that they're going to get through it. I know it's it sounds cliche now, but I'm telling you, you will get through it. And I this another goal of this YouTube channel is to also help anyone who is open to and I hope that a lot of you are, is to heal your relationship with death. Death is this amazing, ever-present experience that we all know exists. But we like to think like, um, you know, but we don't see that. We just going to ignore it like that elephant on the wall. Nah. You know, death is a beautiful and encouraging and should be an expiring you know that cheerleader on the side like hey you doing good you doing good you doing good yay but i need you to focus on now love all you now give more attention to your children now give more attention to yourself now take yourself to the spa go get your nails done spend some money on yourself for a change all right Get up and just say yes. Enjoy life, right? That's what death is telling you. It's a chillier for you to appreciate what is going on right now and live life to the fullest. You know? So it's talking about, hey, maybe we'll get together and you have a relationship with death. It's like, and you'll high five them. Like, thank you, death. I'm thinking about what's going on now. Right? Because we get sidetracked. Life does that. We get so focused, especially as, you know, as a widow or widower. Your mind is, like I said, because all these extra roles, you're not just planning. You're pre-planning. Less, especially me. I am truly a pre-planner. Pre-pre-pre-planner. So it's dealt to be like, hey, 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 I'm going to need you to focus. Tap me on the shoulder. I'm like, ah. Uh, you know, this is because of the relationship I have with Delta now. Okay, and we're not always like this now. But because I'm here, 
I want to tell you all to let, don't ignore them. Because guess what? It's, it's here to stay. <laughs> I didn't create the process, neither did you. And the one that did is the one of ultimate love, of the most beautiful, unconditional agape love. So if our God, our creator, source, uh, I'm sorry, my nose is <laughs> created it. It has to be beautiful and it has to be wonderful. And it is because the wonderful part about it is like, hey, celebrate now. Love right now. Be you right now. Get to know yourself right now. All right. Have that dance right now. Have those uncomfortable conversations right now. Forgive right now. You know? So, hey. Oh, wow. 40 minutes. All right. Talk to you guys later. And, you know, of course, when I say guys, I mean everyone. Talk to you all later.